where you would think in today's time that seems natural or normal to have a checking account or a savings account. Uh, but everybody, everybody, it's not the case. Uh, there, once upon a time, people, including myself, a way to save money was to go to the post office and get post office money orders and just let them sit and accumulate because you didn't have a bank account. My parents uh, had some communication issues and lost their house to foreclosure and we uh, split up uh, as a family. Uh, I went one direction, uh, stayed with extended relatives. My sister and mother went to stay with cousins and I don't know where my father went to stay, but uh, family dynamic as we knew it changed forever. As a result of becoming homeless, a lot of times, or in my case in particular, I didn't have a bank account. So I would rely on cashing my checks at uh, liquor stores, at check cash in places, and sometimes even under the table where somebody had you know, X amount of dollars and you take your check to them and you sign it over to them and you get the full value, face value on what was on the check. When you take your check to a bank that has the name of the bank written on it and they say, you can't cash your check here, without paying a fee. I, I just had no understanding of it. The check's written with your bank on it. Why am I paying you a fee, you know? They could never give you a uh, answer, you know, that made sense. So a lot of times if you're homeless or you're poor, you have to accept that because you need your money. When you start adding up hey, I have overdraft protection, let them pay it, and then I'll take care of the bank later on the back end. Well, $36 starts adding up. And if you look up after a year's time, you could well have donated anywhere between $400 and $1,000 on up. Um, when I wasn't doing so well financially, uh, and I did go back to having a bank account, I tried to make sure that I didn't have a lot uh, of buildup with overdraft fees. One, I didn't want to continue to contribute to make other corporations rich. And two, it just didn't make sense financially to keep paying $36 here, $36 there. So overdraft fees are uh, something that uh, banks used to stay afloat. Uh, overdraft fees usually affect people, unfortunately, who are not good managers of their money. They didn't uh, learn about finances. And there, there are times that people make mistakes, you know, and unfortunately not able to keep up with the system. Or they, when they first opened their account, didn't read the fine print. And that's how they get you with the overdraft fees too. Being under bank was definitely quite an experience because I didn't grow up that way. Uh, but I learned in going through that experience, I was losing a lot of money. And I wasn't making a lot of money. But you know, when you have a check that may amount to $100 to $300 and you're getting two, three, five percent of that taken, that starts adding up. What happens if the banking system gets hacked and you don't have access to your money? What do you do? You don't have access to your credit cards. What do you do? It can happen. And it's not a far-fetched idea that one day you may go to the ATM and your card doesn't work. Or one day you may walk into the bank and that, this happens frequently. We are closed for the day, sorry for the inconvenience. Now they may tell you that they're just closed for whatever reason, but no one really knows the real reason. Just as the post office offers many services here in America, if they were to go back to offering postal banking as they did 
between the late 1800s and mid 1960s, it will do America a great service. One thing's for sure, if we incorporate having the Postal Service uh, bring back banking, it will help a lot of people. The Post Office is, is a respected institution. They are known for, uh, of course, mail delivery, uh, but they offer a lot of different services that people automatically uh, put their trust in. One, they know that if something was to happen to their money, if they were to get uh, post, post office money orders, that is insured. Uh, and you know, you have to go through a few things to get that money back, but you'll get it back. So that's one level of trust. Secondly, if the post office goes back to uh, offering banking services, they can be a little more flexible in what they offer. They could uh, potentially offer uh, debit cards. Uh, in addition to money orders, uh, uh, they can may be able to offer uh, savings or checking accounts. Uh, and just like the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation insures your money in a bank. The post office already has your money there because of the sales associates. They constantly take in money. So people see that and they feel comfortable with that. Uh, for example, when I had uh, purchased money orders to keep in case of a rainy day, I knew that at any point, if I needed to cash it in, long as it was after 12 p.m., it was a 99.5% chance. I was able to cash that, that, that money order without any fees. That's the other reason why we need to offer postal banking. They don't charge the fees that banks charge, credit unions charge, check casting places charge, liquor stores charge. There's several uh, bills in Congress right now uh, that indicates the importance of postal banking that we really need to get behind and take a look at.